This is Joe Vasta, Math 265A, Calculus 1, Quest to College. We're doing 3.10, which is derivatives of inverse trig functions. So the first thing we want to look at is y equals sine inverse x. This is a derivation of this. Um, we can also write this as y equals the arc sine of x. This book will be using sine inverse. Okay, um, this definition applies for y values between negative pi halves and pi halves. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this. This is an inverse function, which means I really can write this as x equals the sine of y, because that's really what it means. Um, sine of what angle gives you x. So we have that right there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit both sides of this equation with the derivative gun. The derivative of x with respect to x is 1. The derivative of sine y, okay, the derivative of sine something is cosine something. And the derivative of y, so we're doing the chain rule and we just took care of that part, the derivative of y is 1 y prime. Okay, we can solve for y prime now by dividing both sides by um, cosine y. So we'll do that. This is cosine y. And so I have y prime equals 1 over cosine y. The problem is I don't want y's in my formula for the derivative of the sine inverse x. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to take this equation and draw a right triangle that has angle y, because that's what it says. Sine of the angle y gives me a measurement. Um, it actually gives me the measurement. Let's write this over here. So sine y equals x, and you can put it over 1. So we got to remember, like, Oscar had a hunk of apples or Sokotoa. The sine of this is opposite over hypotenuse. Using the Pythagorean theorem, we can get 1 minus x squared under the square root for the other side. And so that is the triangle that we draw. And we can make the argument that we, we can do this proof between 0 and 90. But because the cosine of negative theta equals the cosine of theta, we can actually cover all that, all those angles. So now what I'm going to do is ask you what the cosine of y is. The cosine, Oscar had a hunk of apples adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse is the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by 1, which is the hypotenuse. So this is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. So that right there is the derivative of sine inverse x. The other five trig inverse functions or inverse trig functions can be derived the same way. So what we're going to do is we will take a look at a table of derivative formulas. And so look at the cosine 
almost looks the same as the sine, except there's a negative there. And in fact, the three C's, like it was before when we were just doing regular trig functions, all have negatives. And the tangent inverse does not have a square root. It's 1 over 1 plus x squared. And that one's seen more often than some of the other ones. And then the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. At the end, we'll show you a whole sheet, a handout that you can get on my website that is derivative formulas. Now, having seen these, let's go ahead and see if we can do some problems that you would see in your book. 3.10 is not that long of a section. So let's go ahead and do our first problem that looks kind of like the homework problems. So our first problem says, find the derivative of a function which equals sine inverse of e raised to the sine x. Now remember, I'm going to go ahead and put up this derivative here. Sine inverse x is 1 over square root 1 minus x squared. Okay, so that is the first thing we have to take care of. Sine inverse of something, and the something is where we're going to put the x's. So here it is. Now, if you feel like you want to take a shot at this before I do this example, that might not be a bad idea. You can pause the video. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and do this. The derivative of sine something. 1 over square root 1 minus something squared. Here's the something. There's the squared. And that takes care of the sine inverse. Now I'm taking the derivative of e raised to the sine x. So e is the next thing that's on the outside for the chain rule. The derivative of e to something is e to something. That takes care of the e. And now I'm doing the derivative of the sine of x, which is the cosine of x. Okay, we just have to clean up this answer a little. This is going to equal. On the top of the fraction, we have e raised to the sine x times the cosine of x. On the bottom, we have the square root of 1 minus, and look what we have. We have a power to a power, or you can think of this as two copies of e to the sine x. So e to the sine x times e to the sine x. In any case, you're going to multiply 2 times sine x. So this is going to give me e raised to the 2 sine x. There's your derivative. Good thing we're not doing derivatives using the definition and the quotient rule because that would um, be too traumatic. I'm going to check the lighting here. Still light enough. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do problem number two. Problem number two. Take the derivative, find the derivative of x times the tangent inverse x, well, square root of x. So, if you want to try, things will be better maybe if you try these on your own by pausing the video and seeing what you can get from this. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is not take the derivative. I'm going to write this as the tangent inverse of x to the one-half. Now, the derivative of the tangent inverse, we can just take off that sheet of formulas, is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so here we go. F prime is this right here 
is a product rule. And the product rule says the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative, here's our formula, I'll kind of box it there, times the derivative of the second. Now, how do I do the derivative of tangent inverse something? Tangent inverse something, it's gonna be one, so I'm doing the chain rule over one plus something squared. And that takes care of the tangent inverse. And now I do the derivative of x to the 1 half using the power rule of derivatives. 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. So this part needs a little cleaning up, but we'll get it cleaned up. I have the tangent inverse. Um, I can keep that as x to the 1 half. It's just faster for me to go like that tangent inverse root x plus okay what do we have on the top we have well let's see here we actually have an x from here and then you have an x to the negative one half and on the bottom we have a 2 which is that guy right there and then we have 1 plus that guy right there is power to a power, so you multiply. It's going to be 1 plus x. That's this guy right here becomes an x. So we are going to write out one more step. And I'm going to find a way to um, maybe melt this tripod somewhere else, because I find that when I write, it shakes the camera a little because the tripod is rested right on this surface so try to do that sometime but the most important thing was to kick out these videos in a timely fashion and so if I worked on all the little perfectionistic things I would not have a single video down okay so we have x times x to the negative one half that's going to be x to the one half power so this guy right here is x to the one half power because this has a one here and you add the exponents I'm gonna write that as root x this is all over 2 and then we have 1 plus x there and there's the answer so in your homework they're going to ask you to do derivatives of the inverse trig functions and uh, you'll be using product rule, quotient rule, chain rule and other things. So let's get rid of this and look at our next example. And how are we doing? Is it blurry? It's good enough for government work. So we see secant inverse there I'm going to go ahead and jot down the formula for the secant inverse of something. And I'll just put the x there. This is the weirdest one because it has an absolute value there. Which, there's the formula. Okay, so I'll box that formula. And what I'm going to do is take the derivative. Now before I take the derivative, if anybody wants to pause, see if you can do it on your own. I mean, that's a good idea. Okay, so the derivative of the secant inverse is a secant inverse of something is one over, and then there's two places where I put the something. So watch this. So let's be very careful on this. One over we have the absolute value 
of something. And here we have the square root of something squared minus 1. And notice the somethings. Here's the something right here, and it went right here and right there. Look at our formula. This was the x, and there's an x there and an x there. So we're just doing the chain rule. Now I know I usually cross out the secant with orange, so I know that. That's probably confusing, but that's what you get for free YouTube video. Okay, so we've just taken the derivative of secant inverse. So now we're going to focus on 3x minus 1. What is the derivative of 3x minus 1? Well, it is 3. Whoa, what happened there? Okay, what we want to do is simplify this thing that is under the square root. I'll do it off to the side. 3x minus 1 quantity squared minus 1. This is 3x minus 1. 3x minus 1 minus 1. This is 9x squared minus 3x minus 3x minus 6x plus 1 minus 1. This is 9x squared minus 6x. And I'm probably shaking the camera a lot by doing that, so I have to once again, figure out how to mount the camera to something that is not touching the desk. So f inverse of x equals 3 on the top, and on the bottom we have the absolute value of 3x minus 1, and inside the square root we have 9x squared minus 6x. Now you might say, I can take the square root of 9, but there's two terms there, so there, you really can't pull a 3 out or anything like that. And so here's your answer, there's your derivative. Well, that takes care of problem number 3. Okay, our last problem, let's see how we're doing here, yep. Last problem of 3.10 is this one where we're finding the tangent line at the point 2 pi over 6 of this function. You go ahead and you put 2 in there, you get the sine inverse of 1 half. Um, the sine inverse of 1 half is 30 degrees or pi over 6. So how am I to do this? Well we have the formula for sine which we've already written a few times. Sine inverse x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now you could put parentheses around here. Once again, doing the chain rule. And at this point, maybe you might be able to do this problem on your own. You can pause the video and then turn it back on and see if you got the right answer. Okay, there's going to be some trig here. So we have the derivative of sine inverse something it happens to be 1 over square root 1 minus something squared. That takes care of the sine inverse. And then we do the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x over 4 is the same as like, say, taking the derivative of 1 fourth x. So we end up getting 1 fourth. Okay, now we're going to do some algebra on this. This is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared over 16. You have a 4 on the bottom, I'll put it right here. And I'm going to get a common denominator inside here of 16. And 
equals. So what I have is I have 1 over 4 times the square root 16 minus x squared all over 16. 1 over 4. Well, we can break that square root up so it says the square root of 16 minus x squared all over the square root of 16, which we know to be 4. So what happens to those 4's there? They cancel, and you end up getting, that's the green pen, 1 over the square root of 16 minus x squared. Now if you're thinking you can write that as 1 over 4 minus x, we can't do that because there's more than one term. There's two terms under there. It would be like if you had 1 over the square root of 16 minus 9, we cannot write this as 1 over 4 minus 3, which would give us 1. When we know this is 1 over the square root of 7. So let's just cross this out. We don't want anybody coming onto YouTube and, uh oh, they're going to see it, aren't they? Oh well. Okay, so there is our derivative. Um, we've actually run out of space. We want to find the tangent line at the point 2 pi over 6 and we know that we just found the derivative to be 1 over the square root of 16 minus x squared. So that's what we're doing now. And I'll just keep the original problem there. So what we want to do is we know that our line, our tangent line is going to look like this. y equals mx plus b. We need to find the y-intercept, which is b, and the slope. This happens to be the slope function. To find the slope at that point, plug 2 in there. So we're going to get 1 over square root 16 minus 2 squared, so minus 4, which is 1 over the square root of 12. And you can simplify that square root and write it as 1 over 2 root 3. This right here is the slope. So when you rewrite that equation, y equals mx plus b, your m is this pretty ugly number here, this irrational number that looks like that. Now how do I find b? I put the slope in. <laughs> what did I just say? How do I find b? I put the point in. And so the y value is pi over 6 minus 1 over 2 root 3 times the x value of 2 plus b. The 2's cancel and we have, well, okay, I'm going to cover up the original problem now. Pi over 6 equals 1 over root 3 plus b. So we have b on the right hand side and then this is pi over 6 minus 1 over root 3 and there's your b value. So b is right there. So we just plug it in there and end up getting our final answer y equals 1 over 2 root 3 x plus pi over 6 minus 1 over root 3. 
there's the tangent line at the point 2 comma pi over 6 which was the uh, move them, move them both pieces of paper That's the tangent line now if we were in the classroom I might plot that on like Desmos or whatever put the point on there put this line on there and then you would see a tangent line and we'd all go ooh ah aren't we glad we know how to do this um that concludes 3.10 and we'll be back some other time you guys have a good day over and out